rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. We've come to this point one more time to lift up the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. And we bless his name for who we are, for what he's done, and what he is going to do. Uh, today we celebrate our graduates from all walks of life. We want to you to stay seated until our graduates enter into the building. Why don't we celebrate with our graduates? I welcome, help me welcome, help me welcome the class of 2024. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy. 
feel like they ought to take this moment, just this moment we have right now, just to say, Lord, Lord, I thank you. Because you've been so good, Lord, I thank you. Because you watched over me one more time, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I know I hadn't been good, but Lord, I thank you. Lord, I know I haven't done it your way, but Lord, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, I know I've been a bad child every now and then, but you have been a great God. You have blessed us again, Lord, and for that, I just want to stop right here at this moment just to say thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for what you do. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We worship you. We praise you for just being God. Hallelujah. This is a good moment. This is a good moment just to say thank you. There's bad news all over the news, but we want to thank him for good news this morning. There are people who were robbed and killed just today. It is just early in the morning, and they have already left planet Earth. And for that, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for one more chance, one more privilege, one more opportunity just to get it right. Thank God for who he is and what he does. He is the awesome and the amazing God. There is none like him. There is no God like our God. He, he keeps us when we can't keep ourselves. He instructs us when we are on food street. He blesses us when we fall short. We just want to thank God for who he is. He is the precious, the gracious God. And we ought to be kind enough just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We serve the amazing God. Thank God for who he is. I'm going to call your attention to 2 Chronicles 15 and 7. It's pronounced 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 7. 2 Chronicles in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the book is 2 Chronicles. Chapter 15, verse number 7. If you found it in the New King James Version, you will find these words. But you, be strong and do not let your hands be weak. For your work shall be say, be strong, not weak. Be strong, not weak. I just want to say a few things to our graduates and allow you to listen on today. God has a message for everyone in the room. And God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. The subject matter is to be strong. The word strong means to have strength, to have might. It is the opposite of weakness. We can be weak in our hearts, weak in our minds, and weak in our bodies. But God says to us, as he sent word to Asa in the text, and that is to be strong. The devil has a way of catching us at our weakest moment. So God says to us, be strong. The devil has a way of pouncing on us when we are down. But the devil doesn't come and create grappling matches. <laughs> he comes for all our fights. And to our graduates this morning, let me remind you that you have accomplished some great things in your life. And because you have accomplished some things, I need to let you know that it won't always go your way. I want to say to you this morning that you have to make sure that you find yourself strong 
And there will be a time in your life where you cannot find strength or might, but you got to trust God to be strong for you. The Bible says that when you are weak, God is strong. In our weakest moment, God comes and he blesses us and he strengthens us even in our weakness. Therefore, I say to you, there is no reason to even think suicidally because God can make you strong. There is no reason for you to be one who have low self-esteem because God is able to make you strong. There is no reason for you to be upset because of somebody saying crazy stuff to you. God says he's come to make you strong. There's no reason for you to be upset because people don't like who you are. God has come to make you strong. In the text, we have, a, we have a whole nation, a whole nation that had turned away from God. This whole nation that had turned away from God had suffered from the hands of God. I just want to tell you, not always will your enemies take care of you. Sometimes God will take care of you. Not always will your enemies shut you down. Not always will your enemies be the one that hold you down. Sometimes God, the text declares, that as they walked away from God, God walked away from them. Let me just say to you, in this, in this fast screaming in this fast moving pace society that we're in. I understand that this is not a season where church goers are flocking the pews. Uh, we, have, we have machines, we have pads, we have tablets, we have electronic devices that can see everything and do everything and we can be across the world in a matter of seconds. We can view everything right there from our living room. But God wants us to take Hebrews chapter 10 verses 23 through 25 at heart where it says, come together in fellowship one to the other so you can work together as you worship God. Proverbs 27, 17 says it like this, as iron sharpens iron, so does one brother to the other. I just came to tell you, this nation walked away from God, and as they walked away from God, God turned his back on them. As you look at the fact, when you abandon God, God will abandon you. The text says, the text says, Asa got to a point well, he wanted to recognize God once again. My first point to you is, God will stay with you as long as you stay with God. God will walk with you. God will stay with you. God will be there for you. God will walk with you as long as you walk with God. God will stay with you as long as you stay with God. God is looking for an opportunity to stay with you. Oh, man, you move into another grade. You're moving to a, a, another a realm of life from high school to college. You are going to see some things you never even heard of. You're going to see some people doing stuff that you didn't think folk did. You're going to hear of some situations that are blowing your mind, and you're going to wake up one day, and you're going to be right in the midst of it. The Bible says that we are in the world, but not of the world. We can't be like them. You're going to see young people doing what old folks do. You're going to see people dress like other folks dress. You're going to see people and hear people that use language that you didn't even know it was in the dictionary, and most of the time it's not. You're going to find out that you're going to wake up one morning and nobody's going to tell you, get up, Hazel, and go to school. Nobody's going to say, Hazel, you got, you got class at 8. Nobody's going to say, nobody's going to say, now, Hazel, I tell you, you need to not hang with that crowd. 
Because when you get about 50 miles away, you think grandmama and granddaddy and mama aren't there. There's going to be some boys looking at you, Hazel, and telling, I love your cheeks. They're going to say, Hazel, I love that pretty smile. And I, can I pinch you on your cheeks? They're going to ask for a lot more, but we'll just start with that in church. But Hazel's going to understand that she has to stay with God and she has to take care of business in the next two, three years. Give it and then you go into another place with new people. You're going to make new friends and, and people are going to be doing stupid stuff. And they're going to be getting into trouble. And they, they're going to tell you, man, you ain't cool because you won't do it. I'm saying to you, don't hang out with the wrong crowd because the wrong crowd will lead you the wrong way. A lot of us in this room have suffered in eighth grade, ninth grade, twelfth grade, in college. We, we have suffered because we saw people doing stuff, and when they did stuff, we wanted to act like them. We wanted to be like them. I, I told Gilbert, I said, Gilbert, when you march in, don't, don't pimp when you walk. This is an official ceremony. This, this is an uppity class uh, si situation, Gilbert. You can, you can pimp later on. We have to get to a point where we know where we are and we adapt to the atmosphere as long as the atmosphere is a godly atmosphere. Paul picks this thought up again in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. He says to us this morning, he says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, your mind is a terrible thing to waste. Don't spend your time wasting your time. Don't spend your time putting stuff in your mind. And certainly don't put any substance in your body or in your brain. You see, this bottle of water, this bottle of water takes on the form of everything it gets in. This, if, the, if I lay the bottle down, it takes on that form. The water takes on that form. If I pick the bottle up, it takes on that form. The Bible says, do not conform. Right, Be one that will stand for the Lord. The text declares, as long as this nation stayed with God, God stayed with them. My first point is, God will stay with you as long as you stay with God. You, you don't have to think about it. You don't have some things. You don't even have to pray about it. When you hear about it, it's wrong. When you think about it, it's wrong. When you see it, it's wrong. And wrong can't become right. Just, just make sure that you don't conform. Any, any atmosphere, any group of people you get in, you ought not look like them. You ought not act like them. You ought to carry yourself as if you've been to Sunday school. As if you've been reading your Bible. As if you've been hanging around church folk that love the Lord. As if people really care for you. You don't have to conform to anybody else because they are headed down the wrong street the wrong way and you are headed down straight street the right way. And you look at the text and you can read the whole chapter later on. Uh, as long as you stay with God, God will stay with you. My second point today is when you seek God, you will find. The Bible says in, in, in chapter 15, it says that, that this nation sought God, and then they stopped seeking him. Then they sought God, and they found him. It says to us all over this room that as we seek God, God is not far. As we seek God, God has a way of blessing us and being right there for us. Have you ever gotten to a point in your life where you ask God, God, where are you? God, what you doing? God, why I'm going through this? Oh, woe is me, God. Let me tell you, you reach out to God, God is already reaching out to you. The text says that as that nation walked with God, as that nation saw God, they found him. But I want to tell you, God has never lost. God, God has never moved. God is still where he was. God is still doing what God does. God is still getting our attention, and God is still wanting to be a part of our lives. So whatever you do, make sure you stay with God, because if you seek him, you can find. 
I'm not talking about faking it. I, I'm not talking about walking past God and acting like, God, God, I, I've been here all the time. I, I see folks do that all the time. I see people do, they show up all the time, and they don't give, they don't give any explanation, and they don't have to. They don't say anything that's, 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 uh, that's contributing to the conversation or taking them farther. They just show up and act like I've been here all the time. I mean, I've seen it in the choir. People been gone six months. They show up on Sunday morning, give me my microphone, I don't want this one with this color on it. I want that color. I saw a woman, I saw a woman, I experienced it as a pastor. I saw a woman take the mic from a nine-year-old. She ain't got no business in the choir anyway. Thank God she's with some other pastor. Because we got to understand. We have to understand that you don't just show up. It's kind of like me leaving the house. Sister David doesn't know where I am. I show up three months later and, and come in the house like I'm running something. <laughs> showing up, showing up like I've been gone three months. And I come in, you know, I'm your husband, you know. I am the man of the house, you know. Let me tell you, Brother Whitlock, if you gone for three months, I don't know if you be the man of the house when you get back home. I'm telling you, when you seek God, you will find him. If you do it the right way, God will bless you. Whatever you do, do it God's way. The thing about seeking God, when we sin, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says it like this. When you sin, King James says, if you sin, uh, the, the real explanation of the, of the original text says, when you sin. Because Paul says in Romans 3 and 23, we all sin. We all fall short. We all mess up. It didn't say y'all mess up. It said we all mess up. So when you sin, you need to make sure that you go to God, confess your sin, and as you confess your sin, then God is faithful and God is just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and to forgive you of your sin all at one time. I'm telling you, we serve a merciful God. So when you get out there and you get with your new friends, when you get with your new homies, when you get with your new dogs, when you get with your new cronies, when you get with your new buddies, remember there's always a way to get back to God. Don't be so embarrassed. Don't be so shy that you walk away from God and you don't want to seek him anymore. Whatever you do, know when you're at your best, you can go to God. Know when you're doing all right, you can go to God. And know that when you're at your very worst, you can go to God. Seek him because he can be found. My next point, my next point is that if you abandon God, God will abandon you. The text, they, they just turn their backs on him. They stop obeying God. They stop acting godly. They stop being godly. That's how they stop hanging out with God. And so when you stop hanging out with God, God will stop hanging out with you. I'll give another analogy, and i got to use myself. If my mama, who is 81 years old, I never call her. I never visit her. I never let her fuss at me. Because I've come to the conclusion that my mama knows how to tell a preacher off. I mean, she is the world's greatest of telling her children off of me. And if I let that point about my mama turn me so far away from her that I abandoned her, I'm in trouble, not her. Because the fact of the matter, I can't even tell her when she wrote. I can't even tell her, even when she come to my house, I can't tell her, mama, you, that's your spot over there. I, she got every spot in the house. Many times we've let her have the bathroom, we've let her have the, the, the master suite, we've let her have whatever she wants because she's and because she's mama, it doesn't matter what she goes, what she does, how she acts. I can't abandon her because when I abandon her, I abandon the word of God. 
The Bible says, when you honor your father and your mother, your days will be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. It's the first promise that God gives. And let me tell you, it's a promise that God will keep. So whatever you do, don't, don't abandon God. Stay focused. Don't abandon him. Stay focused. Stay focused. The words you've been reading, stay with that word. There will be some Buddhists on your campus. There will be some Muslims on your campus. There will be some cross dressers on your campus. And, and Hazel, let me just tell you now, not only will the boys want to pinch your cheek, there are going to be some girls that want to pinch your cheek. I just want to tell you, I, I, I mean, if she going to hear, she might as well hear from the church. She only got a few more months to go, a couple more, couple more months. And I'm going to tell you, Hazel, you a pretty girl. And girls think you are a pretty girl. And Hazel, whatever you do, don't abandon God. Stay focused and don't believe this junk that a woman knows what a woman needs. Let me just tell you, stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. Watch what God is doing. Stay focused on him. You ever with Daniel? The girls are looking at you. <laughs> girls don't. Girls don't wait till you come to them anymore. <laughs> they come to you. Your hair just sizzles when they brush it. Ooh, I just love your eyes. And I like when you get in trouble. Let me just tell you, life does not become great until you do great things and don't abandon God. Stay focused. There will be the temptation for all three of you to skip class today. I don't feel like going. Well, life doesn't operate on a feeling. Life does not operate on how you're getting along this day. And whatever you do, stay focused. Don't spend too much time at the student union. Don't spend more time at the student union than you spend in the library. Don't spend so much time on, on social media that you miss what's going on in class. Don't spend so much time looking and strolling that you miss what God is trying to tell you and what you're there to learn. I am here to stay focused. I am here to do it God's way. And while you're staying focused, make sure you remember your purpose. We go to school to get education. I, I just admire, I just admire those who those parents who have boys that are, are great in athletics and, and then the athletics uh, NBA or NFL offer them a shot while they're still in college, but their mom and their dad say they didn't go to school to play football. They didn't go to school to play basketball. They have to graduate before they go to the NFL. They have to graduate before they go to the, to the NBA. They have to graduate before they go to the LB, MBL, MLB. You have to understand that God has your purpose in mind, and you got to keep your purpose focused. You got to stay focused on your purpose. Your purpose, your purpose for going to school is to graduate, not quit your weight. I think I said that one more time. Your purpose for going to school is to graduate, not quit your weight. I don't know how you can interpret that around it, but but it means to stop. Your, your purpose for going to school is to do the best you can while you can. Don't get concerned about people calling you a nerd because the same folk that call you nerd today, five years from now, they'll call you boss and you'll be telling them what to do. Whatever you do, stay focused and remember your purpose. Obey God. Obey him. Obey him. You, you got enough Jesus in you to know what's right and wrong. But you have to continue to saturate yourself with the word of God. Daily eating the word. The only day that you cannot spend in the word of God, regardless of what school you go to, the only day you cannot afford to spend a day without God. The only day you can spend without God is when you're dead and gone. 
Because if you're dead and gone and you are a Christian, you don't have to worry about it. You are with him. And you will forever be with him. But let me tell you, you cannot afford not one single day to spend your time without God. Medical technicians and scientists have discovered that patients recover at a rapid rate when they have faith in God. Now let me tell you, they had to spend years and years to understand that. Now these are smart people. These are intelligent people with doctor degrees. They had to spend many, many years doing research to understand that when a person is in a coma and they play music, Christian music, in their ear the whole time, when they wake up, if they are with God, they are turned back toward God. They have to spend years and years of studying and get other folk in the information and putting it all together. They spend years and years to discover that when a person with faith walks in and put their hands on them and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to raise them up. They had to spend years to understand while God is still blessing them even to this day. But we learned in elementary school in church. We, we learned it at, at two years old in church. I just get joy out of seeing little babies run around and, and mark the folk in church when the folk in church are raising their hand and doing their dance. That's why I say let them run. Maybe they'll get somebody else to run. Right. I, I said to a brother the other day, I said, brother, stop letting the ushers pull people out the church that are shouting. Go over there in the corner and get the joker that sleep. Wake him up and maybe he'll start shouting. But don't interrupt somebody that's already in the mood, that's already connected with God, who is lifting his hand and, and raising her voice and thanking the Lord for who he is. Why would we zero in on that person? Hold them down and, and shake them up. You just interrupted my, my quiet time along with God. Stay focused. Remember your purpose. Obey God. My next point, be strong in the Lord. Be courageous. Be strong in the Lord. Stand flat-footed and talk about who your God is. You're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem. Everybody in this room is going to have a problem. They're going to have a problem with you talking about your Lord. Now, you are not to talk about your Lord when it's instruction time. It is time for your Lord to show out in the midst of instruction because the Bible says the next chapter over is 2 second, second, second Chronicles chapter 16, right around verse number 9. It says the eyes of the Lord are looking to and fro throughout the whole earth to see who he can find and show himself mighty through. Now the hands of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord is willing to use you. He's looking for you. If you show yourself mighty, he want to show himself mighty. She says, be strong. She says, be strong. Whatever you do, be courageous. Be courageous when it comes to the Lord. Understand who you are. Understand whose you are. Understand what God is doing on your behalf. And don't shut that down because you got new friends. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I have to remind my daughter every, every now and then that your friends ain't your friends. That's terrible English, isn't it? Your friends are not your friends. And because you have seen how your friends react when you are down and out, let me remind you that your daddy was there, your mama was there, your grandmama was there, your bonus mama was there, everybody else was there, and everybody else was gone. And if they just stop by for a moment, they just there for a moment. People will tell you, I'll be with you through sickness and in health. And you get sick too long, they get too gone. People don't stay around sick folk. They, they pray you through one moment. They pray you through one day. And if you don't hurry up and get sick, you won't get a phone call or a text the next day because you're staying sick too long. <laughs> you got to make sure that you stay strong. Strong in the Lord. People will pray you through. And if you don't, if God doesn't answer right then, they forget about you. Folk got other stuff to do. They ain't got time to be hanging out with no sick people. But one thing I've observed with those who party, if one of them get shocked 
and the friends still partying, and the one who got shot is in a wheelchair for life. When the friends show up at the club, they roll in their butt in the wheelchair because they're not going to leave their buddy behind. And if they're going to have a good time, they don't mind rolling them in in the wheelchair because they want to include their buddy. The problem at the local church is that we won't roll wheelchairs in to hear from the Lord, but some of those guys will roll wheelchairs in to do that. I've even seen guys on the dance floor in a wheelchair, and they've learned how to whistle it and turn it and move in the wheelchair. Let me just share with you. You stay with the Lord. Be strong. Stand strong in him regardless of what the temptation is. We have too many young adults that's not in church. We have too many young adults that think they got it going on. But the fact of the matter is, God said, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue must confess. At the name of Jesus, Everybody going to have to give God, give Jesus Christ, give the Holy Spirit just what he deserves. You can either voluntarily do it or you can be made to do it. You know, there are some cycling groups that's out right now. We saw about 20 of them on the way here. And yeah, I love it. I, I would love to cycle. But I, I have given my life to Jesus Christ. And they can have as many cycling events that they want to have on Sunday. They can do their thing. And the thing about our former mayor, he had his cycling event on Sunday. Let me share with you, that's my worship day. That's the day I come before the saints, get together with them, whether I'm preaching or not. That's where my iron is sharpening iron. And I'm going to devote this day to Jesus. I don't go running. I don't go cycling. I don't go wrestling. I don't go out to eat. I don't go to the beach until I've come and given God the glory. There's people washing their cars. People mowing their yard. The yard looks good. But how is your relationship with Jesus? You have to cultivate, cultivate every relationship you have. And you have to work to make it happen. That's my next point. Work for God diligently. The text declares that this nation got it right when they started working for the Lord. Work for the Lord diligently. Now, one thing that, that, that I generally do for, for students who, who, who graduate from the New Beginning Church, I I, I meet the pastor where they're going to be attending church. And when I meet the pastor, I say, hey, now she is in your hand. He is in your hand. Because everybody needs a church. If Hazel can't make it in every Sunday, it's all right. There's a church over there preaching Jesus. I am not stupid enough to think that the New Beginning Church has and has come block, has a, a monopoly on preaching Jesus. So what I make sure I do is make sure that the members of the New Beginning Church have somebody that we can refer them to at another location where if they can't make it on Sunday, they ought not be sleeping in on Sunday. They ought to get involved in the youth ministry there. They ought to be striving as in the ministry there. They ought to make sure that life is just about the same there. And they ought to work diligently. Work diligently for the I think I'm talking to everybody in the room now. We ought to work diligently for the Lord. I had this, had this run in. You know, my family are Choctaw Indians on my mama's side. And they don't take any stuff. I guess that's why mama just say what she wants to say. But two weeks ago, I was with her, and she told me about 60 times, I'm 81 years old. I wanted to ask her, what does that mean? But Sister Woods, I didn't ask her a question. She told me every time something came up, we could just be having a common conversation. She said, look, I'm 81 years old. And she shut up. And I shut up. What we have to do, we have to get to a point in our lives where we're never too old to work for the Lord. So my aunties and I, we have, you know, I'm the oldest boy, so sometimes we have our classes because they're close to my age. And so, my grandmother was living, and, and they was like, well, we ain't going to roll her in the church. What that look like? 
I said, it looks like she loves the Lord. She said, well, she can't do what she used to do at the church. I said, God doesn't expect her to do what she used to do at church. I said to them, let me give her a job at church. Now, I'm 600 miles away, but I'm having this conversation with them, and I'm telling them, y'all could, should not stop her from serving and working for the Lord. They said, well, well, mama doesn't speak like she used to speak. I said, God is not asking her to do anything that he has not blessed her to do. I said, what mama can do, because we call her mama, what mama can do is sit in that wheelchair. And as people come through the front door, she can hand out gifts to them. She can hand out programs to them. She can roll. Matter of fact, she can roll in that wheelchair a lot quicker than we can walk. She can roll the wheelchair up and down the aisle and pass out offering them alone. You have to work for God as long as you on planet Earth. Don't give up your work for God. Keep working for the Lord. My next point. Your work will be rewarded. Your work will be rewarded. When I was in the chemical plant, I had, had issues with Sunday. A rotating shift, missed four Sundays a month. Next shift, missed three Sundays a month. Sometimes it was nine Sundays before I could make it to church. So every time somebody wanted some overtime, I would switch out my Sunday with their Monday. Because there's a burning in me. Because there's a, a void in me, and that void looks like God, and, and I can't fill that void with money. I can't fill that void with a person. I can't fill that void with a place or a thing. Every Sunday, you got to find yourself in the presence of God, worshiping him and thanking him. you got to work for him and find something to do for God during the week. You don't have to work on Sunday. You don't, you don't just have to work for the Lord. You need to show up on Sunday. You, you don't have to wait to Sunday to work for the Lord. Because every day of your life is a day that God has given you. Every single day, every single day. And I want to show him that I'm appreciative. And if God wants me to pick up paper and dump trash, I am going to do it because I know that working for the Lord has its reward. Working for the Lord may not pay much, but the benefits are out of this world. Working for the Lord, we don't see the tangible things right here. Uh, people used to say back home, now, Reverend, we can't afford to pay you what you're worth. I said in my mind, well, you ought to try. Because the fact of the matter is, you would never be able to pay the man of God what the man of God is worth. And I don't think men ought to preach just to get paid. I'm just telling you that the rewards of the Lord, if they don't give it to you, somebody else will give it to you. And if God doesn't use a person to give it to you, he will give it to you himself. Denzel Washington says that his mother told him this. Men give a war. God gives rewards. And I far more like the rewards of God than the awards of men. God will give us praises when we are due. Men don't have to clap for us. Men don't have to stand for us. Men don't have to praise us. Matter of fact, let God do it because God knows how to bless us more than anybody else. The final thing I see here in the text. The Bible says that Asa the king, he threw out all of the idols. He began to clean up the nation. My last, my last point is when God blesses you, show God your appreciation by getting rid of everything that is not of God. When God blesses you, show God your appreciation by getting rid of everything that hinders your relationship with God. I tell people all the time, don't let your blessing become your curse. People get new jobs, and they're just so thrilled on that job. They just know that they got to be there seven days a week. They do two, three jobs, and they miss service. They miss working for the Lord. They, they miss doing things God's way. I mean, they get two or three jobs. Then they get involved in sports. Then they get involved with the, the neighborhood staff and the HOA. They get involved in everything under the sun, and they block out God. 
when God blesses you, get rid of everything that hinders your relationship with God. You got to get rid of it. You just got to leave it alone. Some brothers got to leave her alone. Some sisters got to leave him alone. So, some people will say it this way. Well, he goes to church or she goes to church because I invite her. If somebody is in your life in an intimate way, very close to you, and they don't add to you, it's time to shut it off. Some people would say they got to bring something to the table. Let me just say, if they don't come to the table with God, it's not your responsibility to take them to God. It's your responsibility to let them know what you require, and your requirements are sunk into God. So don't, don't let them don't, don't let them don't let them tell you, well, you're gonna have to pray for me and wait on me. I say I pray for you and wait on you at a distance. I'm looking for somebody who can pour into my life. I'm looking for somebody who can improve me. I'm looking for somebody that is God sent. I don't need anybody to tear me down. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm handsome. I don't need anybody to tell me I like your walk. I don't need anybody to tell me that you're in good shape. I need somebody who's going to add to me in my friendship, in my relationship. I need somebody that's going to add to me. And that's why Jesus came along. Because we were on our way to hell. We were stuck in the muck in the mire. We were messed up. We were sinners on our way to hell. But over 2,000 years ago, on a skull hill called Calvary, Jesus the Christ died, I tell you, on a skull hill called Calvary for you and for me. He was added to our lives. We were on our way to hell, but Jesus died on Calvary. Mean men killed him. Mean men hung him. Mean men dropped him. Mean men stressed him. He died on Calvary, I tell you. After he died on Calvary, they laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because early that third day morning, before the rooster could grow, before the pilot could change the God, before the dew left the ground, early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus is available to you today. If you struggle with working for him, this is your moment. We need to pray with you. If you struggle with whether or not you're going to heaven when you die, this is your moment. This is a good moment. This is a good opportunity to get it right with God. This is a great opportunity to get to know Jesus. If you've never trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. The same Jesus that died for you, that rose from the dead, he's available to you today. Just re repeat this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins and rose from the dead. We believe that you're now born again. And when you leave this earth, you will look up and be in heaven. Thank you so much for welcoming Jesus into your home. There are others who may not have a church home. We're willing, we're able, we are qualified to be your church home. We want you to have a family that you can celebrate the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with. Whether you're in the room or on streaming, we invite you to join the New Beginning Church. The door is open for you. If you're not in the room, you can join locally or globally. We have both local 
and global members, we would like for you to be one of them. Just inbox us and let us know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. And if you look to visit, please come and visit us at 4251 Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas. That's 4251 Shuramai Road. Shuramai is spelled S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048, the USA. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will. You will be served. electronically you can give to the New Beginning Church by giving by way of mail our Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zell account if you want to mail in your gift you can do so by mailing to P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you now for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless every giver and every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to stand, come forth and bring the Lord's tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts.
are to attend Wartrip High School and focus on basketball and his grades. Gilbert
as we turn our attention to our prayer request, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. That comes from Mark 11, 24. We are praying for Elaine Caldwell Joseph, Beverly Waters, Wallace, Johnny Woods, Patrice Caskey, Walton Bean, Alvin Powell, Cora Woods, Angela Presley, Larry Woods, Lula Richard, Herman Guillory, Nathan Garrett, Chad Warner, Terry Lewis, Doris Bridgeford, Auraria Kiera Spencer, Malaria Williams, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Marlene Sudeman, Vivian Oslaha, Paula Hornsby, Ed Brennan and family, Jacqueline Torres, Raymond Alfred Jr., Al Brinson, Terrence Miller, laborers in for the harvest, world peace, and the entire New Beginning Church. Thank you. She was the one who helped us reach our goal with the, uh, the visitors and friends. Her, her goal was to raise $5,000 just among her friends. And she did that and more. And because she's been a friend of this church and, and uh, Sister Wallace has, has been a friend of this church also, they, they support us because Brother Miles is here. His sisters support him. He's the only boy. And I, I have to see if he's four, but he's the only boy. And so his sisters have always supported our church since he since he's been here. So we want to take them before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. God, we honor you for just being God, the great physician. We thank you, Lord, for being God, the one who heals us. We thank you, Lord, for being the God who's our comforting keeper. God, we thank you, Lord, for being the God who walks with us daily and keeps us strong. God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing. And now, Lord, we ask you to show yourself mighty. For a mighty God you are. Bless every person on our prayer list. Bless those who are not on our list. We pray, Father God, that you give peace, knowledge, and understanding. We pray that you wipe out all confusion. We pray, Father God, that you give guidance to those who need it. Lord, we pray, Father God, that you serve as the one who makes all things Lord, we call on you, for we know that you are able to continue to bless us. Now, Lord, we pray for every person, for every member, every visitor. We ask you, Father, to bless us now, that we will have the victory. And as you bless us, as you reward us, we will be careful, Lord, 
to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. To the mighty, powerful, strong name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you. Our graduates have, have a, a celebration of fellowship right out this door down the hallway. It will be shared between uh, Proverbs 22 and my office. Stop by and say hi to them and celebrate with them. It's just a little snack for you. And uh, they will receive money if you got it to give it. I think they would not turn it down. And so please uh, let them know how proud we are of them and, and how God is continuing to bless them. And we're glad that God is blessing them. And we're looking forward to them doing great and marvelous things. Do we have any visitors with us today? Visitors, visitors, if you're visiting with us, will you just stand for a moment? I know that lady, don't I? Are there any other visitors with us? Tell us who you are and who invited you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. To, thank you so much, so much for coming and, and being a part, a part of our, our service. Thank you for being, being a part. Come on in, my brother. Come on in. We're, we're looking at our visitors. Come on in and tell us who you are and who invited you. Come on down. I recognize that young man. Tell us who you are. How you doing? My name is Dan Fletcher Burns. And actually, I know the pastor. Yes. And I was on my way home. I said, let me stop in. And I saw the folks that were still there. I said, let me stop in and say hello. Amen. Thank you so much. Come on down here. Let me shake your hand. And uh, yeah, Sister Davis kind of terrorized his children <laughs> for many years. Yesterday we had our celebration with Weedy, and I want to tell you, Sister Davis and I received the award for the most people, the most, the most tables. We had five tables of people, and it was forty-five dollars a person. So Hazel and Carla brought them out yesterday. She, <laughs> she brought them out yesterday. So she has a village surrounding her, and we're looking forward to her reporting great and marvelous work. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, be sure to stop by and get refreshments. All minds clear? All hearts clear? No, it's not. Sister Nicole Davis, will you come? And Jacob, will you come? Sister, not that Nicole Davis, that Nicole Davis. And Jacob. We went on a youth mission trip on last two weeks ago, and uh, our youth have, our youth, uh, one, one of the places we went to was the National Civil Rights Museum, and so we wanted to add to your library collection. This is a reference book that is not to leave the library, but people can come in. This is the National Civil Rights Chronicle. It has many of the African Americans in there that fought in the Civil Rights. And this is a deck of cards. Somebody, somebody that's super spiritual already can. That pastor got a deck of cards in the church. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The super spiritual already got the guy already here. It's a deck of cards. It has numbers on it, but every deck has a, a, um, a African American that accomplished great things on it. So as you play with cards in the library, you will get an opportunity to read the history of many African Americans that made made contributions to us. So we wanted to present that to you to go in the library.
And uh, if you haven't seen the library, stop by and see it. It has been trained. That room has been transformed. So Jason is going to give you that when he's done with you there, okay? <laughs> give it to him, Jason. church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me, John 12 and 32. Okay, our grand is going to lead us out with some graduation music. They're going to lead us to our, our destination for fellowship. Amen. Amen. 